I was on YouTube looking for a design for a better crystal battery and I came across John Bedini's um, crystal battery. John Bedini is a famous inventor. He is known for his pulse motors, but he also does uh, crystal batteries. So um, we're going to try to replicate his battery, and, but using common um, materials that you can find at your local hardware store. So the first thing you'll need is one part, um, reduced Epsom salt. So Epsom salt is this stuff, magnesium sulfate 7HTO. We'll be boiling this to remove the 7HTO out of it. Uh, next thing you need is three parts Rochelle salt, that's this stuff. And then uh, you, you'll need a half inch um, uh, two, copper tube and end caps. And that's, that's this stuff right here. And you're also going to need a good um, tube cutter. It's going to save you a lot of headache. Uh, last thing you'll need is a, th a three quarter of an inch by two inch galvanized bolt. And that's going to be our um, anode. And the tube is going to be our cathode. And uh, I'll also be using these spacers um, at the end of the um, of the battery. So when I when I put the cathode and NO together, they won't be short short shorting uh, at the bottom. And uh, I'm I'm also probably going to use this pyrite, which is fool's gold. I'm I'm gonna just um, put a little bit in there. Um, in powder form. Actually, John Bedini doesn't mention pyrite. That's uh, uh, but John Hutchinson does. So that's that's straight from uh, John Hutchinson. To the battery design, I, I also decided to add this um, little O-ring because uh, it's really hard to keep the bolt from touching the sides. I'm gonna disassemble this one just so you can see it. See, there's that little O-ring at the top. And there's that little uh, other washer at, about, at the bottom of this tube. So that prevents shorting uh, the bolt to the bottom. And this washer prevents the bolt from short shorting uh, on the sides. Here we are in the kitchen boiling some Epsom salt. Uh, th this white powder is Epsom salt. Um, chemical formula is mag magnesium sulfate 7 HTO. We're trying to boil the um, H2O part out, so just leaving the magnesium sulfate crystal behind. Epsom salt has been boil boiling for a while. Uh, you want to make sure you get all the water uh, out of your Epsom salt. So let it boil for a very long time until you see a, a solid crystal and you won't see any bubbles. It's been over an hour now and um, you don't see any more bubbles in your um, Epsom salt. See, it's, it's, it's hardened all the way. Once your Epsom salt cools, extract it from the can and grind it into a fine powder. I'm going to use this more and pestle to, to do that. This is reduced Epsom salt with the can removed. Keep working at your crystals until you get a fine powder. This might take a while. Okay, eventually your uh, mixture should look something like that. Try to get uh, all the big lumps uh, out. And at this point I'm going to transfer it to another container. So... Uh, now we're going to be making the finishing touches to the battery casing before we start cooking the whole thing. Um, as, as you can tell, your battery doesn't want to stand up straight. And that is because of this bulging that the cap actually has. Uh, it's, it's not a really big bulging, but it's there. So what you want to do is you want to flip your cap uh, upside down and uh, tap it with a hammer. You know, rotate it. Uh, tap it some more. Don't do don't do it too rough because you don't want to damage the cap, but you do want to flatten it down. And I, I've already worked worked with this one, and as you can see, it sits perfectly.
so you you want to use a small file or some sandpaper to rough up the inside of the pipe and get rid of corrosion and make copper um, uh, you know rough a little bit on the inside here we are again in the kitchen ready to cook the ingredients so uh, I have this um, uh, reduced Epsom salt Rochelle salt and a small piece of pyrite I'm going to uh, use a file to file away a very little bit of this pyrite it's called doping by John Hutchinson so I'm actually doing a slight variation in um, John Bedini's battery with this pyrite I'm gonna see what the effect is gonna be so the ratio is one part reduced Epsom salt so I'm just using a spoon to measure That's about a spoon. So one part reduced Epsom salt. Three part Rochelle salt. going to add uh, the spirite and mix it really well. I, uh, add, I use a piece of paper to add the mixture to the battery. So very carefully. Right now my battery is cooking away. Um, I have these uh, three 18 volt batteries wired up in parallel, positives to positives, negatives to negatives to increase the um, amperage. As you can see, they're at 19.2 volts, and um, I have the uh, the negative hooked up to the uh, copper outside, and I have my anode ready. Uh, once the crystal is is boiling, I'll put it in, and I'll tap it with the positive. Um, with, the, with this terminal right here and that will end up polarizing the crystals um, so if you don't have these 18 volt batteries I'm actually improvising car battery battery would have worked just as well I'm boiling my battery now I cut the uh, back side of a can um, and put a hole in it just to stabilize the battery so it won't fall over so that battery is still cooling here we have a finished battery Let's check the voltage. Point 0.9 volts. Here is our other crystal cell battery completed. Let, let's check the voltage and see what we get. 0.928 volts and um, here's the size comparison this is a regular uh, battery you find in flashlights it's um, 18650 battery and here's the crystal battery as you can see uh, size wise they're comparable see. and um, the reason the voltage uh, is is pretty low 0.9 volts is because we used a uh, galvanized steel as an as an anode if you use a different metal like magnesium the, the voltage would be higher, it would be a, a, around 1.5 volts. The reason I didn't use uh, magnesium here is because I couldn't find a magnesium rod small enough to fit into a half inch uh, pipe. And um, I'm thinking ferrosium, it's a uh, ferrosium alloy will, will work, but uh, I haven't got around to trying it. I'm going to try to demonstrate practical application for these batteries. So I wired them up in series and they're charging the super capacitor. And let's see uh, how we're doing. I think that's how you apply these batteries is uh, you get them to charge a super capacitor because uh, by themselves they don't have enough uh, juice to, to run an, an LED. So I'll be remaking these with uh, different materials with um, magnesium or ferrosium 
I think that will give me more more juice to work with. Anyway, I hope you you guys enjoy this video.